on this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. What would you do to join the cult of the Winchesters? It's angely, demony, monstery, and ghosty. Let's do this. episode of the devil's trap podcast i'm diana i'm liz and i'm trying to quietly type and not just <laughs> have them like shit i remembered i need to look up something for this intro Oops. and Oops. i wanted to make sure that i had a right name and i i did hi diana how are you i'm i'm all right how are you well i just told you you're frantically typing quietly uh yeah no i'm hanging in i got we did a household project and um i'm i am retired that's what i got yeah it was a big it was a big household project it wasn't it wasn't you know it's like you know i'm just gonna paint a wall and a ceiling Sounds very it's easy. The adding the ceiling, I think, is like where, like, because that's just a hard thing, and like, there's and no trim. way you can do that with. And you, you're tall people, but even with tall people, that's just an awkward. Yeah, you're, it may have been easier to do that if so you're long. shorter. I don't know because you don't have to look up. You could get. I, I, it's yeah, it's not a comfortable thing to paint. It's not, but it looks lovely, and yeah, that's what I got. And then we went and. I went and had uh, the the too much meats. What do we what do we want to ever call it? I don't know. The Brazilian I call steakhouse it meat thing. on a sword is meat my sword. typical go to for it. Meat ninja was my go to because they they got swords. Meat with swords on. And they sneak yeah, up on you. Yeah, and the and place that you went you. to if they because so they are the same franchise as the one That's that is you down like. here, and yeah. their service is insane to the point so that it good. gives me anxiety, and I need to be like boys. You need to back off. It You're was, making me fucking nervous. Like, get the fuck oh, out of my face, please. I mean, I had my own purse hanger tree next I to me. I do love a purse hanger tree. Why don't we always have them? Because you give me something to put my purse on everywhere. And then, like, the serve, you're right, the service was impeccable. Some of the best service I've had in a minute. So it was a lovely experience. And then everybody was very, very full and sleepy. Yeah. So how did your new strategy work out? So I know, explain your new strategy to, to the folks. So strategy at these places is because it's all about, I mean, it's, it is not an, it's not outrageous, but it's not an inexpensive meal. Right. But a lot of us don't, can't like really eat the volume to maximize a fucking all you can eat thing. And I, I can't anymore. Well, I mean, I try. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So yeah. My strategy is, is that you prioritize certain things on the salad bar that you can't get all the time or are high value. Very nice cheeses. I get excited about hearts of palm. They also had miniature uh, wedge salads and I love a wedge salad. So I was stoked. Dave was all about them. Oh, they had them in little miniature. That's adorable. They had little miniature ones. Yeah. And like you had a prosciutto slicer. Of course. They had a prosciutto slicer where they were slicing it on the machine right there. So Dave was drooling and he was happy. So like I prioritize those little things. You don't pile up on the salad. You have to eat the little stupid bread bites because those little like cheese bread ball things are to die for. Mm -hmm. But you don't overdo it. You don't mess too much with the mashed potatoes. That's just a little palate cleanser in between thing. Same with the plantains. Skip the fucking chicken leg. I'm sure it's lovely. But like why bother? You prioritize the really good meat. If you're into it, the lamb chop. Some of the, the pork ribs are lovely, like things like that, like things that are really well done, like well executed. I should say not well done as in well cooked. So that's how I operated this. And then spent way too much money on wine. <laughs> like you do. No, I mean, uh, well, sort of one of the other approaches that you can take is going in knowing what expensive cut of meat you would like. Ooh, and when you don't, don't like see that. it, then you say when that, when they have all of that fancy service and like that guy comes around, he was okay. like, how's your table? And you're like, that's great. I was really hoping to see 
blah 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 feeble of da 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 and they'll be like oh like I don't know and like and generally they'll send that out if they don't send that out then they'll they'll also like go with like a a comparable cut right so that is the other way that you can maximize and also like that way you're not just having to rely on the random like order that they pick you can direct the order of your, your sword dance of meat to make it the most bang for your buck we took full advantage of requesting things as soon as people like, and the rest of some of the people that I was with my, was with my family, but uh, we had one person that had never been to a place like this. And then one that hadn't in a long time. And like, so I'm like, no, no, what do you want? And they're like, Oh, it's fine. I'm like, no, what do you want? And they're like, told me, and I'm like, can we get some of this? I'm like, Oh, can we get more of that? Oh, she really wants it cooked like that. And they were on it. It was Beautiful. Hopefully you didn't ask in that in, in that voice because I would have punched you no, in the face. I didn't. I didn't. That's just Diana. That's my silly voices. I'm I've been on a silly voice kick and I'm kind of not sorry about silly it. Silly voice is fine. <laughs> not I don't actually use it to talk to people. It's I'm just like, people oh that my I God. Like, like, like I have seen that girl ask for things and waiters and they just like that waiter and look that's that that is why I tip well. Because they had to to, to deal with Becky's that. voice. No. Yeah, I'm glad it, you. Was, I'm glad you, you enjoyed it. Yeah, and I actually got to see, a few, and then a few days before, I got to see some fireworks. Not as many as I hoped, but I got to see some in my neighborhood. <laughs> not, not professional ones. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, that's all. How about what are you up to? Other than it's, typing. And so I, I have been just you know nesting. I'm oh, nesting is the right word. Just organizing settling. and yeah, settling but just trying to make life livable so I can actually get back to work and and doing things I need to do and with yeah just busy you know during these things like you're, you can't really do anything else you can't find anything you can't focus yeah. so yeah. I'm like okay I'm almost at a point where I can get back to regular life and I'm starting to get emails from from people who are wanting Wait. things for you know I'm like yeah yeah yeah, I'll get there. <laughs> but I uh, went up to Austin to go see the the mm-hmm. Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, musical on uh, in air and at, at at my at my at, I guess my gym whatever. Uh, but it was it was really great. It was hosted by James C. Leary who plays Clem in Buffy, and he is the demon with the extra skin who likes to play poker with kittens with Spike. And it was really great to see him there. I'm not sure how many people really got those who that was, but I was like, oh shit. Like, but you know, cause he wasn't dressed as, you know, cause you can't, yeah, there, there's a lot of, you don't really involved. know what he, and he only said it once. So, and I'm not sure how like often he presents burlesque or aerial stuff. And he seemed to have a good time. And it was a good show, although, and I don't know if they were doing this because of copyright, you know, girls, like, I'm sorry, I don't want, but there was, because, you know, there was a thing on the, on, on some of the posters that says we're doing this anyway, so I kind of feel like this may have been some, some gumption performances going going a little rogue going a little rogue and so sometimes like they would start off with the song from the musical and then it would stop and it would go into another song that wasn't in the musical and they would do a performance to that i'd be like but okay that's cool but i didn't but come to see that song so I don't know if they had to do that. I'm assuming they did, <laughs> but huh. it, it was it was still a, a, a very good time. And I haven't you know I haven't seen burlesque in a while. There was some good burlesque, and you know there was a lot of good silks peoples, and there was a lira dude, and he was good, and it, it was a, a good time. And I'm, I'm glad I went and, and got to see loose skin and Clem. Nice. So let's hop into this week's episode, Devil May Care. Hmm. 
And that is alluding to some song, and I forgot to look at why. And they usually say somewhere on the Supernatural Wiki what the thing is. So let's see. Okay, the term, so what Supernatural Wiki says, the term devil may care is used to describe someone with a careless or reckless attitude. The phrase is a shortened form of the devil may care, but I do not. The phrase's origin dates all the way back to around 1785 to 95. It is also the title of a 2008 James Bond novel. Thank you for that supernatural wiki that someone hmm. went deep. And hmm. it was directed by Guy Norman B. Uh, we had last saw him last season doing Blood Brother, which was season five, and the season 19's Taxi Driver. Okay. And it was written by Andrew Dabb, and we saw him last season with Trial and Error, which was episode 14, and then episodes 22's Clip Show. Okay. So, we <sighs> start off Devil May Care with a recap that is very, very Abaddon heavy. It is. It's Abaddon, Crowley, we got Sam dying and Ezekiel taking His over let it go frozen this- moment. This is what I'm calling the, you know, his let it go. Cause is that what it is? It was, yes, his frozen moment. And Dean's big secret. Be- and I'm just calling the non-consensual possession. And it's just what I'm saying is what has happened to Sam. Because I don't I don't think he had a choice in this. And he's just had yeah. somebody inserted into him. Well, he did, but he... He, it, was, it was a loophole. It was a loophole. That's what they're playing with. It's it's something Oof. that would, you know, just piss somebody off. So, any house. It's We're going to open on a spooky house that I wish I owned. With a body bag being dragged through it. I mean, and that's fine. I mean, you, you, just, you, don't, you don't have to put that on the Zillow page, you know, but. Sure. Uh, it depends on if the body was, you know, found there or not or whatever, probably, right? It's, I don't know if that's a disclosure needed. Um, and then we cut to Dean and what I'm calling Sam Ezekiel throughout my notes because it's confusing. But right now it's basically Sam. I don't know. It's good. I don't know how to See, but the, yeah, you can't you can't say Sam Ezekiel but just he Sam has right it now. like he's yeah, I think we have to distinguish when it's the yeah, well go on. But this is Sam Sam. Sam. Sam Sam. And he they are talking about Cassiel on this picnic bench and discussing the fallen angels and yeah, it basually seems like he, they're just playing catch up with each other, yeah. and it, which no. is you know, hey, we're kind of recapping things in the episode. But didn't y'all just do this in the car? Yeah. So why why are y'all doing this? Okay, so how like and now I'm really getting concerned about your like how many times both of you have been hit in the head and, he, he and how, how much you drink. Hit. Yeah, and that too, that too. <sighs> Uh, what? Oh, um, oh, oh. And so remember that last episode when I said, take note of Crowley being in the trunk. And then, oh, yeah. like, we just didn't talk about it again because he didn't get out. No. He was he there that entire time. And it was just like, hey, yeah. drop this in, like, this episode. He's just how, like, so he's been in, like, it's got, does he have to pee? Do, do demons have to pee? I don't know, like in I mean, his angels body, don't, right? like the angels don't. So I mean, but it seems like he kind of gets sweaty and shit, right? He got smell like oh, bloody. I don't know. Sounds gross. It's. I think it smells like. I'd be hungry. Smell and like, did they like like put things on top of the weapons and trunk, or is he just like lying like across like all of the weapons? machete? A machete and. Some how bolt. do you like? Yeah, how do you avoid getting a machete in your nutsack? You know. Like, Maybe he so many, that. so many Crowley problems in this trunk. Team trunk. Yeah, because he's just still in the trunk, and uh, they open it up. Have, they open trunk. Team trunk. Yay, Yay trunk. trunk. <laughs> and uh, it says that he, it's it's Dean's junk in his trunk. Benunkadunk. I know, I know, I couldn't help it. Um, all right, so then we cut to back to this abandoned, creepy, spooky house, and Which you cannot candle pretty. You just can't not. No, like, no you it just it just looks like a squat with candles. It does. It really does. And this guy, this mechanic dude, is doing spell this, work with a body bag with a burned up body in this body bag. 
And basically, he does this spell, and it's Abaddon back in her body. You know, well, first we see some well manicured claws, just like Wait point down. her way through, and just like ah. Oh. And there's swirling like, as gross cock as smoke she waiting. Is, like her nails are great. And there's swirling cock smoke ready, waiting for this body, which is slightly confusing. So here's my question of the day. Not, I don't know. It's a question of the day. It's a question. So Abaddon was burnt up, right? That's that's her body was burnt up at the church, and and she cock and the 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 meat suit that was actually Jody was burnt up, I should say, right? And Abaddon, the demon, cock smoked out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got Abaddon cock smoke swirling in mm -hmm. this room and burned up Jody body. Josie. 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 Not Jody. Sorry. Yeah. I caught myself. I'm like, wait a minute. Josie body in the bathtub. So did Abaddon just not want to find another meat suit? We like really like Josie. She got and really like, attached to Josie. Okay. That's, I just want to clarify. She, like, really, yeah, like she really wants to. Well, I mean, until the I don't blame later. her. I don't blame her because she's fucking hot. And now she has like her hair super like she's like, oh, and she's like all she naked and like she rises like out of the tub. She's like, here are my claws. Here is my hair. It looks fabulous. It looks like it was pen curled like while yeah. it was up there. Yeah. It's just it's very Rita Hayworthy. I'm really no, digging good. the vibe she's giving off here. Mwah. I was just so. clarifying. I, mean, I wasn't no, a complaint. No, it's, it's important because we have a few other things like this that'll happen throughout this episode. Right. So we cut back to the bunker where Dean enters and Kevin tries to shoot an arrow at him. And Dean calls him Katniss. Yes, and he is bad. And Kevin's been having a few bad days, including he knowing that he is constipated. Yes, because when the bunker kind of went nuts, it, everything shut down. It locked him in. His phone didn't work, and he thought the world was ending. And Dean's like, mm, "Yeah, the angels fell. It was bad, but you know, next time the world's ending, get a gun." And also, by the way, my phone works just fine. So what the fuck, dude? Like, so Kevin kind of freaked out and went a little uh, feral, I guess, or whatever. And he did. He in. sometimes, but you know, like if I was in this massive bunker and every all those lights started, woo, 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 like yeah, I go yeah. a little crazy too. Yeah, but. I also think that, you know, he, he, Kevin says, you know, well, the system reset when you yeah. open the door, which may be horseshit, but also may be true. May be true. May be true. So Sam enters leading Crowley, who is blindfolded and tied up into the bunker to take him to be locked in the dungeon. Kevin is not happy about this. And the dungeon, as we recall, is a behind the file cabinets in the storage room. And it's just not a, a great place to have a dungeon. I think they need to relocate it. I think, it, as we'll see later, it's, it's just not, it's just not, it's not good because you have to do work in the files. So maybe th let's think about relocating this to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, they get, they get, Sam and Dean take Crowley to the dungeon where Dean promptly punches Crowley. Well, you think and... he's going to say hello, boys. And he says, hello. And then before he gets to the boys, then he's, Dean punches them in the face. And I just think that was, the comedic timing of it was awesome. Yeah. Um, and basically Sam and Dean's plan is to try to get, which I think is kind of a weird one. Like I said, I don't know how success, successful they actually expected to be, but they want the name of every demon on earth and who they're possessing. Which and, sounds like their plan, right? So their plan is to kill all the demons. Yeah. And they're but like, then hey, we, we go, saw have you. to go back into the, what now? So how, like, just you kill the demons, how now? Right. So are like, you killing so, them? Do, are, like, are, you... are we exercising them? Or are we, but does that just send them to hell? Are we sending them to hell so they can come back? Are we stabbing are we them killing the, the meat knife? Suit? Like, like I don't think this is a plan. I think no. this is a, what the fuck do we do with Crowley? Okay. Let's no, try what it. We do, this is, this is, we're not closing the gates of hell. So we'll just fuck off all the demons. And I don't think that's a great plan either. I know. And. Sam's like, oh, I saw your human side when I was breaking down, when I was trying to cure you. And Crowley is just not having it and just straight up mocks him back. He says, like, you have, you have no leverage. You didn't, if you did, you're not closing hell because you didn't do it. You're not killing me because you didn't do it. It's torture. And he basically says that 
you know, makes a joke about Sam and SM, S&M gear. And yeah, okay, yeah, let's we'll see what the proper I'll let you do. do it. I'll let you he do can't it. wait to see Sam in stilettos and a leather bustier really putting the S A M into S and M. And mm-hmm. then he says, What are you going to do to me that I don't just do to myself for kicks every Friday night? And right. I'm like, Man, my Friday nights are boring. There's, I mean, they certainly don't involve Sam Winchester in stilettos and a leather bustier. Now I have goals. So then they just decide to lock him in. They're like, fine, bye. And they just leave him there. So back out in the main part of the bunker, Kevin is super mad. And and he's like, yeah, he's like super mad. And then Dean's like, no, don't worry about it. As soon as as soon as Crowley breaks down, we're going to let you stab him, and then we'll go for ice cream and strippers. Which is, I guess... Hopefully not uh, the same place. <laughs> Let's have a soft serve machine at the strip club <laughs> at the buffet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. All right. So, soft serve uh, is soft serve. I mean... How, no how bad can that be? I mean, I'm sure it's fine. Fine. It's fine. Uh, so Dean's going to make calls. He wants Kevin to keep working on the, ta- uh, the angel tablet and trying to figure out what Metatron's spell was. While Sam is off to research angely and demony stuff. On or monstery net. and ghosty. On the net. On the net. I like, the, I like angely, bullet. demony, monstery, and ghosty. Angely, demony, monster, and ghosty. Yeah, I like that. Uh, so... Anyways, um, we cut to my goddess. Back to Abaddon. See, and now yeah. the thing is, like, look, I appreciated like the hair down thing when she was like rising out of the top. It was really pretty, but I just think if you're going to be like yelling down at your underlings, like, I think you need to go up, like at least like a ponytail or an updo. Like, I just want to. If I'm going to take, you, I want something more severe for oh. for this for this tongue lashing. Okay, well. She has uh, the mechanic, Jason, who I guess uh, was the one that resurrected, re- repos- I don't know what the fuck word you want to use. I think resur- resurrected, mm-hmm. I mean, it was repossessed, but resurrect, I mean, it, yeah. I don't know, one of those things. Put, put, made, made the body not burn and put Abaddon. That way I just get to say erection. <laughs> I was like, made the body not burned up and put the demon back in the body. That's <laughs> puts, it puts the demons back in the unburnt bodies. I don't know. Resurrection. But, uh, sure. And, uh, resur- possession. I don't know. Anyways. Um, and we got him plus three others who are quote, violent power, hungry opportunists. And, Abaddon's just really disappointed in an angry disappointment in how demons are managing things on earth. Um, and she mocks, uh, we've got grandma demon, uh, and grandma demon ain't going to have it. She's like, I closed 72 deals last year's cause kids love grandma, but Abaddon's unfucking impressed because she's like this. That's the problem. Why are we doing deals? Why are we paying for anything that we should just be taking outright this is all fucking crowley's fault um he a king should fight and conquer and not be a salesman be busy reading contracts yeah this still feels like a corporate seo meeting or you know someplace where everybody gets you know in the tech that everybody has like these grand like conferences that the sales people get together and they rah rah each other to like go but also it's a coup and i appreciate a coup yeah, and she's like, "I'm the queen. Where I'm gonna, we're gonna march into hell as liberators, and demons are gonna sweep over the earth. Humans and angels are gonna bow to me, and, and Crowley's fucking dead. And our grandma demons like the eh. king is dead. Long live the queen. And and our grandma demons like cool, cool, cool. Uh, that's great, but can you prove Crowley's dead? Because last we checked, like we thought you were dead for." A- a week there so i kind of need to know he's really gone before we like commit to this um and by the way i thought nights were kind of overrated so but yeah, abaddon's so, not impressed yeah grammy with this is getting mouthy abaddon is unimpressed so she forces uh, grandma to cock smoke out and says take this message to hell i'm coming 
Okay, so in this time, well, when you get cock smoked out by Abaddon, you go to hell. You leave your meat suit and you go to hell. Not okay. just to another body or whatever floating around on Earth. I don't know. So she's sending the okay, okay. So that's what happened there this time. Yes. Okay. So then we go to Dean, and he is on the phone with another hunter named Irv, Irv. and Irv is. He's telling, he's, Dean's telling Irv how to track the fallen angels with, you know, trap, how to tra- torch them with the holy oil and all this stuff. He's yeah, he's basically just giving him the 511 on, hey, all those meteor things on. falling down are angels. And so you need to have a heads up on like what to do. Right. So he's just doing his due diligence calls. Like, by so the way, a bunch of dicks are running. There's a thousand burning dicks running around. And uh, Irv does get the opportunity to jump. <laughs> that was in Burning Dicks. Irv gets the opportunity to drop in uh, a reference to a story that Dean had whole, heard before about him, about Irv and Bobby fighting werewolf Siamese twins. In Saskatoon. And apparently Bobby would tell this story every time he drank Labatt. And I thought that was hilarious. It was very, very funny. All right. So, so then we're going to cut to some things I think Diana may have some questions about. So we cut to a Navy base. Oh my God. <laughs> so we cut to the Navy base. And then like, who comes out of like the Navy base? Like, are those sailors or are those yeah, soldiers? They're sailors. sailors. They are sailors, right? Okay. Yes. They are called sailors. I'm just, I'm just right now, I'm just verifying that those people who came out of this Navy base at this point yes. were naval, U.S. naval sailors just in. Correct. And, and some camouflaged uniforms. Okay. That, that is a camo. That is a camo navy uniform. Yeah, yeah. That blue camo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's I, that it. Is, yes. Uh, and there's three of them, and they get on a bus. Uh, they get on the oh. municipal bus, which is oh, not no, shocking. I also I want to make oh. fun of them because also they're being gross about their weekend plans, and one of them is going after a girl named Jamie, which is really funny considering they're sailors. And that Diana has a sailor brother named Jamie, that so <laughs> they're going after Jamie in, in the town. Anyways, sorry. So uh, we go to the bus. I know I was skipping over it, but yes, so they're on the bus. The municipal like bus. Away. They're on the municipal bus, and they sit down. And they look around, you look around and you realize that all the other bus passengers, all the other ones are Abaddon's demons and Abaddon herself is the driver. And they cocks, all these demons cock smoke out of the current bodies and go into the the sailors' bodies. So the question I have is, was it, did Abaddon possess the bus driver or did she send her minions on a quest to get her the outfit? And then outfit, did they have outfit. like a bunch of different, because that bus sailor, that the bus driver outfit is, looks a little too perfect for what the bus drivers, I, I don't think, you know, so I have a no feeling, bus driver in San, no bus driver in San Diego is wearing that fucking outfit. No. So and I was in San Diego a couple months ago. I didn't get on a bus, but I can tell you, I, I did not see any bus drivers dressed like that. So I think there was a side quest of minions and they had to go procure her and they ended up going to like a costume thing or something. But then there was like a montage where she tried on and then oh, they the kept outfits. bringing her like different uniforms. And she was like, God damn it. And they're like, it's like, I can't be a construction worker. I have to be a bus driver. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh, all right. I'm just going so, through like the YMCA outfits. Yes, and that is exactly <laughs> what is happening. Like it's like Charlie's montage from before, but now it's with Abaddon and, and uniforms. Okay, so that all happens, and then we go to a cliche damsel in distress. Yeah, hot chick with a broken down VW, Ooh, and and a creeper in a van <clears throat> stops off her house. Hold on, I've got a bitch first. So, well, we'll get to my bitch. Cre- this dude that looks like they intentionally made him look like a creeper. I'm not trying to be mean. In a van, which is a cliche creeper thing too, pulls up. He's offering to help, and she's got the because it's not the hood because it's a fucking BW. So it's yeah, it's a good open. Bag. Yeah. And she's but before, when they're pulling up, she's like touching things in the engine with like a, a rag. Right? She's got it open. She's looking out like she knows what she's doing, and then she's like, "I think the thingy broke." 
I get we get in a minute why this was being played out this way. I just thought it was weird that why are you even have like why do you why are you even touching things? I didn't understand why. She was just playing damsel in distress, just being, you know, I mean, I don't think she ever once intended to, like, I think that car works fine, and she just has the trunk open, and then is playing stupid girl to let a a stupid man let a woman into his van, because even though he's a vampire, he still has a dick and is dumb. Well, it just seems like a waste of getting your hands dirty unnecessarily if you don't know what you're doing to put your hand in there. Fair. Because grease is hard. Maybe to she was off. taking advantage of the time and actually tuning something up. You don't maybe know. Like maybe that's she true. was just like, "I'm here, okay." Like I can see, like insert whatever car thing needs to happen. She but yes, she does. She does end up getting in the van with this creepy motherfucker who is a vampire, and there's a bumper sticker that says, "If the van's a rockin', don't come and knockin'." And then they show the rockin'. van rocking. It is. Yeah, it is. It's pretty funny. I appreciate that. Uh, but then we get a blood splatter and a headless vampire falls out. It's not hers. Oh no. Mm-hmm. It was a trap. <sighs> yeah. And she's all like cocky about it and hops out, but our Navy demons are now there and it, they throw a bag on her head. They kidnap her. her. Oh, um, so our next scene, this is where I get. <laughs> so so Diane, okay so Concerned. we established earlier that those navy. were navy soldiers that yes. were coming in out of this navy base in, in san, san diego. diego so now dean and sam who are going federal are talking yeah. to a, a a woman okay well i guess we'll, well first before we get to to that thing they, we just have to note that it smells like sulfur Yes. And there were dead cows every three miles. I didn't want to know, like, what is, do they just let the cows die? Do they take it? What do you are do they with a dead the cow? Like, I don't know. And how do they, like, were they seeing dead cows? Like, were, were like, what was, I want to know more about these dead cows. It's such are a they third way line, or were they but, looking for them? Like, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So let's go to our well, head bitch in charge. Eh. So, <laughs> so who's our head bitch in charge? We have this, an MP. Mm-hmm. In an army uniform mm-hmm. with a specialist rank, which is an E4. This is a not, no knock, this is not a high ranking person that would be She's running. Not an she would officer. not be run or, or an NCO. She's not she an would NCO. not be running shit. She's also army. She doesn't, she doesn't, yeah, an army and doesn't have her name tape on the back of her cover, which is her hat. There's exposed Velcro where a name goes on the back. And now I know. I know this because I've been in the military and obviously there's rules about this and they aren't allowed to make the costumes identical. Like there's rules about like you have to change just enough so it doesn't look exactly like a real U.S. military uniform. Fine. I get it. That just seems like a weird thing. Like you could like cover that. I don't know. It just looked stupid and it made me want to flip a table. Like What the fuck? Like this specialist ain't telling me shit. No offense to anybody else. But also the fact that it's just also a different branch of the no military. The arm, an army MP. Why is there an army MPs on the Navy base? I I don't know because they don't. That doesn't make any sense at all. Then I see it, there's a whole like television show about about the about the people on the Navy base that like take care of this shit. Yes. <laughs> There's there like is. ten, like uh, like twenty seasons of that yeah. shit, and like multiple spinoffs. So yeah, it makes no sense. Very weird choice. Very weird <laughs> okay, choice. So, so to be so- clear, this is our um, this is a specialist. Even though in the credits they call her sergeant, she, I think she introduces herself as sergeant. She does. It's yeah. wrong. That's, but- just, that's not. But anyways, uh, Miranda Bates. Anyways. Uh, but she's like, why the fuck? And she's all like cocky. Like, why the hell is FBI on a military case? Meh. And I'm like, well, why are you a low ranking army soldier on a Navy case? But that's what I wanted to say. Um, anyways. Uh, and so Dean decided, they decided they're going to do like their old tricks that like they would do with Bobby or Garth and call Kevin and pretend that Kevin's their boss. So why? So is Garth <sighs> like, what, where is Garth? Where the fuck is Garth? That's what I wanted to know too. Okay, all right, so we're just throwing throwing Kevin into the fire. All right, go. Kevin is unprepared, and he calls himself, um, <laughs> my notes, I'm sorry. Like, she calls her, she, she's, 
uh, she said when she talks to her on the phone, she calls herself Sergeant. And I wrote, um, wrong. <laughs> so I literally wrote that down. Anyway. I bet you uh, underlined it too. I could just see you feeling <laughs> wrong. <laughs> oh, sorry. Anyway. I mean, I was a specialist once. It's fine. I'm just saying. Uh, anyways. Hey, you, just, you know, you never know. Like, why she's, but she has taken over the scene. So she is. And she is not, she's smart enough that she's not buying Kevin Solo's story because that's his name apparently on this. And she's going off on him while he is typing about him being a little boy and all this shit. When he is typing, well, he is, he is typing furiously. And I appreciate that she says she, we also, it's a thing that we haven't heard since a um, wonderful passing of what's his, our, our favorite. Uh, Ah, why am I spacing on his name? The person that helped them with Dick Roman, uh, the passing of you anyway, know, she calls him the Phoebes. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, she calls him the Phoebes. Yep, yep, she calls him the Phoebes and she calls them pretty boy agents. Yes, and I appreciate, I appreciate those lines. Yeah, and then Kevin starts describing her trip to Cabo last year. Uh, with pictures of uh, body shots on naked dudes and light luchador masks and all this shit. And she uh, clams up and wants to know how he found that. And he says he's going to send those to her commander and uh, uh, unless uh, she lets Sam and Dean on the crime scene. Yeah, so I don't appreciate the sextortion. And I also think that Ms. Bates, if you just like claimed your shit and been like, fuck yeah, I was doing that body shirt off that luchador, like you wouldn't have a problem. I do know that it probably violates some of your rules and the codes of honor and behavior. So like maybe if just the army, they got rid of that shit. Like there's so much bad stuff that's happening with it right now anyways. Like nobody follows that shit, like unless they like get in trouble. So like- Unless she has a security clearance and she didn't get permission from command to go to Mexico last oh, year. Oh, there's a lot of things that, like, the in within It might not have been that, about like, the shots. It might not have been about the body so shots. Many, there's so many things in here that we get shamed for that we shouldn't have. So oh, you if, have to get permission then, like, to go to certain countries with a security clearance. Of That's course, like, yeah, no, and Mexico was taken out and you weren't allowed to, whatever. Yes, yeah, yeah, whatever. But I'm still saying that they're shaming her into doing stuff. And yeah. so I... I don't appreciate I don't appreciate sex fortune as a as a tactic. I think it's it's crass. And you know, just if she just like again, if she was just like yum yum, I like tequila off this boy's stomach. Or she should have just been like Viva so. La Mexico. Yeah. Oh late. I mean, she she could have just said so. Yeah, I mean, but apparently no. There apparently there are not. things, and this is this is enough to to turn her. Yeah. So, uh, they, she hands the phone back after Kevin makes her call, <laughs> sir, hands the phone back to Dean, back to Dean and walks away. And Kevin's like, his explanation is that all military computers are on the same network. So he just hacked it. That's not true. But, yeah. And it doesn't make sense. Cause why would she put, if she's hiding those vacation pictures, why would they be on the military network? But whatever. Anyways. I mean, if she is dumb enough to have her Cabo vacation pictures on her military computer, um, we got some other problems too, but also I know she's that dumb because I have worked in tech on military bases and they are all that stupid. Well, There's a way. reason why those things are strict because soldiers are dumb. Because so, generally they're 18 year olds who are stupid. <sighs> <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. So where were we? All right. So they go into the bus. The bus. <laughs> on the bus. Bodies in the bus, which sounds like I don't like a rap song or something. It does. Bodies on the I'm sure it is. <laughs> or, it probably is. <laughs> probably is. Um, and they discover that all of these bodies already had a years old fatal wounds. So they know for sure these were meat suits all for already. So they came in as demons i'm so glad that you've adopted the word meat suit into your vocabulary just like it's no big day like no big thing and you're just like oh no you just say meat suits like it's normal now i mean yeah. you're so indoctrinated <laughs> well in more exciting news sergeant <coughs> specialist bates shows up <laughs> with security footage and it she's shows- just gonna show them now Okay, like, oh, sure, yeah. whatever. No one said, you had, to, no one said uh, you had to do that, bitch. You just had to let him on anyways. 
But she, we've got Abaddon walking by the, the bus with a big old smile looking straight at the camera. So she wants to be found. And she's like almost in like a musical in that bus, in that bus driver uniform. Like this oh, yeah. is like some 1940s. Like some World War II, like, like... <laughs> I'm yes. making things that nobody on the podcast can I see, know. but I, it, I made it very cute. It was like some, um, some Vera, Vera, Bra- what the fuck was her name? Vera. Oh gosh. I, I, know. I, I just saw her today. The, the, the chick from, <laughs> oh, I'm just going, we were going so off the rails. Rose, Rosemary Clooney and Vera, the girl who I just read it. I was reading White it. Christmas. There was reading a thing on her in People because they were talking about why she had chokers and turtlenecks on the whole time to cover her neck, which is apparently because she had a really bad eating disorder and her neck was aging her because she mm-hmm. was like in her 30s, but her neck looked much older because of all the weight that she lost when she was anorexic. Wow. That's very sad. Time. Vera, what's her name? We'll come well, back in and, and tell you guys at some point in the future. Okay. So we then cut to an alley and somebody named Pete is getting the shit beat out of him. Yeah. It's real weird. And they're looking for the Winchester location. Um, and it's, uh, and he's like, I don't, I, I don't know what it is kept saying bite me bite me whatever and so <laughs> abaddon gets a noose and pulls him up with it and says i know it will hear your screams vera allen beat me to it <laughs> beat me to it all right uh, anyways all right her. so sorry anyways. one of us was talking about the podcast while the other one was looking up <laughs> yeah, we all yeah, have our roles in life you know. yeah okay <laughs> So Abaddon's got Pete in it that we don't know who Pete is. First time we've ever seen Pete. Pete's in a noose and they they want to know where Sam and Dean are. So <clears throat> we get a phone call to Kevin. Well, a phone call to one of Dean's phones. That to a box answers. of phones. There's just like a box of phones sitting there. And I guess, did they tell Kevin to answer these? Like, what the fuck? Did they tell Kevin to charge these? How are these phones being charged? Is there a system? Like, do these all, because I bet you anything, they all have different chargers, which is why we all have somewhere just like, there is somewhere a box of like 20, like, I don't know where they have packed it. But somewhere, somebody like in this house, I have like forty thousand different cable chargers because you have, you have a cable box, a cable a yeah. box full of cords. There's a trunk shit. There's an army trunk of things out there. But yeah, so but all these phones have somehow stayed charged, and one of them rings in the bunker, and mm-hmm. Kevin answers. It's Abby, and Abaddon's like, "Hey, uh, I I'm called Dean's number, but you're not a Winchester, so you need to give him a message for me. Uh, I have something they might want." And she has two hunters tied and gagged. Or one of them being our chick from earlier and the other one being Irv. That Irv. I just can't take it's Irv the hunter seriously. Say. But all right. No. So the so, Winchester boys don't know Tracy, but they of course know Irv. Sure. And they're like, well, I guess we got to go save them because she's going to kill them. And Kev's like, who the fuck is this chick anyways? And Dean's like, look, I need you to look up everything that the men of letters have on the Knights of Hell. Find a way to kill one. Kevin has been tasked with my dream job once again. I just want to be the bunker archivist slash librarian. So Kevin has been tasked to go through the archive and find out everything they have on Knights of Hell and how to kill one. While Sam and Dean are going to, why didn't they walk, just give go, like go, Charlie a job as like a librarian there? That's a good question. Like this would make so much more sense, right? Like you have somebody who could actually be your reference librarian answering yeah. these questions. You clearly need a reference librarian. I do. It makes sense. Yeah, and so Sam and Dean are going to drive straight into a trap, guns blazing in Eugene, Oregon. All right, or outside. Just you can outside. go to at least a Telemac factory and get some cheese and ice cream. All right, so Crowley's still remembering this in the dungeon, the dungeon in, next to the file room. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And, he's reminiscing. Uh, he is reminiscing. Like, that is, he's like remembering all the good times he had being tortured. Is that what's happening? 
I feel like it is like he's because he's going through like all this. I want to be loved and all these things that like, he remembers from his life. But he's thinking hard on this. Well, he realized that Kevin has come in. And so now he first calls out to him and gets ignored, then mocks him. Um, and then Kevin gives in and comes to see Carl. Yeah, and again, like it's just not configured right for a dungeon. You shouldn't have to go to get your research materials next to your torture victim. Hmm. Seems messy. Um, so in the in New Gene, Oregon, right outside of it, Sam and Dean have arrived in an abandoned town that a local it's like your abandoned p- warehouse has been multiplied. It's like it says this abandoned town with like because of a well, chemical plant. It's three spill. square blocks. So I like first I thought it was the abandoned town, right? But then I think mm-hmm. it's just kind of they've just abandoned like these few blocks. This section of town? Perhaps. I don't know. But it also it's just like, damn, this is a commentary on, you know, the states of the world where we don't kind of like really question this too much you're like oh yeah that could happen i did i'm like this is not real this is bullshit there's nowhere like that here anyways oh yeah we almost had that as our lore for tonight i seriously was starting to go down that rabbit hole of different plant towns that were abandoned but the problem is is that most of the news like most of the references are to things that are like like ghost town, ghost towns, like things yeah. that were pre nineteen hundreds, and I yeah. know there there are a few places like where you know because it happens a lot with like crossover with the cryptid stuff because uh-huh. where people can't go like because militaries have closed off because of of things that have happened like like Midwest and the East Coast is like pretty industrial. There are like little places that have been closed down for that, so we almost had that as lore. But I went for something else tonight, so. Yeah, maybe in future we'll, we'll go down that rabbit hole some more. It, it does exist. I didn't. I this was. A, I didn't. You know. You were like, no, it couldn't happen. But I'm like, no, it happens. Well, I'm just saying. I didn't. I wasn't like desensitized. I'm like, that's not real. But anyway, that's not. That was my take. But either way, uh, the biggest thing is that uh, the as they enter this town is that when Dean finds out that this is that everything there is poisoned, he immediately covers his junk. Yeah, because he thinks that his hand can protect his junk. And honestly, man, like you put your dick in so many places. That I don't. I don't really think that the chemicals. That's what you're worried about. Yeah, you maybe like your dick needs to go through these chemicals a little bit. Like get a, a little radiation Cleanse. may do you some good. All right, so oh. they. So then, like the demons have now in this trap situation, which they just don't question this, which I think is weird. That because they know it's a trap, and they're like, they have just left you here tied yes. up, and we're yeah. not going to be preparing for snipers because that's pretty much what I would think, right? If there's I no people, know. you're coming at me from someplace else, right? But instead, Sam and Dean just go into Ozzy O's diner, which is where they hear noises, which is where, um, our uh, our hostages, hostages are waiting, yeah. So, hunter hostages. Hunter hostages. So they they are forced to take shots of holy water, and then they are released. Could you at least add some like vodka to that or something? Be like, look, if I'm gonna do this, can oh. you at least put some booze in it? And then, uh, and so Sam introduces himself to Tracy, and she is not interested in meeting Mister Winchester, and just says, "Good for you." Uh, and Irv's comment is, she's new, smart, got a mouth on her. Ew, gross. Thanks, Irv. I don't like when men say women have a mouth on them. It's gross. <clears throat> so, so, at the bunker, Kevin okay. wants Crowley to tell him how to kill a knight of hell. Yeah, because now this, this is like the shortcut. And like, did you just get tired of research? And you're like, I'm just gonna go to Crowley. No, this seems easy. I think I think he was just like, fuck this. Crowley thinks I'm scared. I'm just gonna go confront Crowley and ask him for what the information I need is. We've got him. Why not use it? I think that was the take. But yeah, so Crowley's like, oh, I'll use that info to negotiate this release. And blah 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 blah. And uh, and uh, he says that he would. Um, uh, spit roast that little whore for you talking about Abaddon 
know, it's gross. But we get a whole bunch of psychological torture of, did I kill your mom? And yes. basically he just invites Kevin to let it all out on him. Just let it out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so Kevin just starts hitting Crowley. And notices the torture stuff. But back at Ozzy's diner. Dean has been inventorying their weapons to escape the poison town. I don't know, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, they've got uh, Jesus Poison juice. town sounds like, well, either something like maybe the next like Cock Rock cruise, like you go on, like, or a really fun, like I would go to the amusement park of Poison Town that was all just about the band Poison. And, you know, every ride was just like, you know, it was just big hair guys like going through. It was like, hey. Themed. Well, <clears throat> they've got Jesus juice. They've got guns with the devil's trap bullets and devil's trap. angel blades. That's also my guitar solo. My guitar solo. Yeah. <laughs> and um, while they're while they're sitting and they're doing this inventory, two of our our demon sailors approach with rifles, which they immediately call assault rifles. And for some reason, like that scares Dean. <laughs> Like whatever, they're all right. Whatever, whatever, oh, no. whatever. But yep, yep, yep. Not even so. But it's then, like, weird. they start hearing Dean's voice say, "Come and get it, you dicks." Yep, yep. And so the two sailors burst in, and it is cleverly a voice recording on a cell phone set up. It was a <gasps> trap. Trapped. The trap trapped. was flipped. But still, like, you know, they had to be watching you because it was a trap. Yeah, these traps are bad. Also, they're just maybe really all of them are bad. Like, it's just like the trappers were just like cartoony bad at what they do. It's all bad. Yeah, this is all cartoon level of crap. Dean announces they've got a flank SEAL Team douche. So he wants them to split off, like... With Sam and and uh, Tracy and and Dean with Irv, but she's like, then Sam like walks into her really awkwardly, which I'd be annoyed about too. And then she's like, "Don't touch me!" And then uh, and he's like, "Whoa, sorry." And she then explains that her family is dead because of him. She watched a demon slaughter her parents, and in, uh, in celebration because some dumb kid let Lucifer out of his cage. Girl, that's what you're mad about. That was like 10 seasons ago. Oh my. So there's so many more things you'd be mad about Sam Winchester for since then. <gasps> and if you're going back to what Lucifer? Oh shit, girl. Like you don't even know. You need to take a seat, Tracy. And we need right? to have some real time talk. <laughs> Good Lord. And so <laughs> Dean's just like, whatever. I'll go with Tracy. Sam, go with her. And so back in the bunker, uh, Kevin now has a very bloody sledgehammer that he has been, I guess, beating the fuck out of Crowley with. I wonder how much that cost. Which, what do you mean? Uh, just because I paid $30 for a hammer this week. So I want to know how oh. much that sledgehammer cost. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> but, I was like, wait, which part? <laughs> so Crowley is offering Kevin his mom in exchange for his freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's really, but then he turns into a higher level manipulation. I, mean, I say, I wouldn't say higher. He piles on the manipulation. The mom stuff's bad, real bad. That's real dark. Yeah. And now he's added on, by the way, what are we even doing here? Sam and Dean don't care about your mom. They don't care about you. Um, you're going to lose everything. You're going to be tossed aside by them because they can. And there's another prophet waiting. You're, we're both prisoners, basically. All they want from you is for you to translate. And that's it. Yeah. So he's just trying to get in his head and just be like, Kevin, why are you trusting his Winchesters? Together? They're just going to let you die. I'm your friend. And I mean, and we can just leave together. We both win. So we don't know how Kevin's feeling about this. So we just got to cut from there to the town, to Poison Town. Yeah. And Dean and Tracy are sneaky sneaking around. And uh, Dean tries to be like, look, you know, Sam's not the only one who thought he was doing the right thing and saw it go to crap. That's part of being. And she interrupts a hunter. And Dean's like, a human. 
I'm just letting that sit for a minute. You're welcome for that. That made my yep, yep. eye twitch a little bit. But anyways, and he's like, it's fine to be pissed, but um, but you really, if you want someone to go after, you, you, you should be going after monsters. Like, yeah, demons. you should be going after the real monsters in this poison town where every rose has its thorn. So Irv wants to go and do a suicide run because he is now blaming himself because Abaddon has got him all twisted up. And he's just like, this is all my fault. Well, he is the one. Apparently Abaddon got to him and he gave up Pete and Tracy. So Pete's dead because of him already. Tracy's got kidnapped because of him. And as he's going on this whole spiel, he didn't even get to go on the death run that was suicide run that would have actually probably helped them because he gets shot by the fucking sniper. He does. He gets shot and it just sucks. And then Sam goes. I am impressed because Sam clips the scope with one of his shots on this. Did you notice that? No, I did not. I don't pay attention when Sam Winchester shoots things. So, I know. That's why I was, that's no, why I was so impressed. He, like, Sam has gotten, Sam has learned how to shoot. I will stop giving him so much shit. So Sam's character has at least learned how to, you know. So Sam runs back into the building and one of the sailors is waiting for him there. Yeah, so he gets Outside, caught. Outside, Abaddon sneaks up on Dean. And Tracy's going to be a bad bitch and shoots her a whole, many, a whole bunch of times. But uh, Abaddon's discovered Kevlar, and she loves the future. Because Kevlar beats magic bullets. Which mm-hmm. you really think should be, like, their, just their commercials for, for a while. I would go just go with that. Kevlar beats magic bullets. I would put that on there. That is the future. That's and but this is also what happens. I mean, I appreciate that, and, and Abaddon appreciated Tracy's grouping. You know, she went for center yeah. mass, but if she had aimed for head, you know, would have missed. You know, why? I don't. Why did she not aim for head? That was made my brain close. Hurt. I mean, they were, but you know, okay. Um, so Abaddon leaves, and so Dean throws holy water in her face, and then gives Tracy the keys to baby. This chick that you just met, you're just giving her the keys to your car, whatever. I know. Fine. And says to go get bullets and holy water. Okay. And that so, seems like something you should have brought with you. Why did why? you not bring the bullets and holy water with bring you enough, on this? They didn't bring enough, did. apparently. Just not enough. Uh, they knew they were going to have to go in guns blazing to this trap, so why'd you leave shit in the car? I, whatever. So... He pulls an angel blade, and now basically Dean and Abaddon are in hand to hand combat, which is probably not great. Back in the diner, Sam and our sailor are in hand to hand combat, and now there's more. So now it's him with all three of the sailors fighting in the diner. Yeah, well, while he's just getting his ass handed to him. Totally leaving his ass kicked. And, um, Abaddon gets D- Dean on his knees and is monologuing a bit about the Winchesters and their obedience and being suicidally stupid. Uh, Dean wants Dean... to know if they're going to fight or make out because he's getting some really mixed signals. And I also would have a hard time not making out with her if she, I mean, it's fair. Well, Abaddon just basically says, I want Crowley and in exchange, I'll just let you die quickly by snapping your neck. Uh, and I'll possess so. you while I eat babies. I will eat yeah. babies and make you like watch me eat babies well, while I on. am inside I like of to, you. I like to peel off your anti-possession tattoo and blow smoke up your ass and ask specifically if he's ever felt an infant's blood drip down his chin. This yeah. bitch is dark. She's dark and, and, and also kinky. <laughs> Well, everybody Sam's likes a little s blowing. That's what her was his preferred method of entrance is the sphincter. Sometimes, but I guess I did. You can go in whichever way you want to go. I, I guess, guess. Just is that a pick demon an enema? I don't know. <laughs> demon enema, or is it a colonic? What? Which would? <laughs> uh, anyhow, <clears throat> demon enema. Um, all right, so <laughs> Sam is just getting totally his ass kicked but all of a sudden his eyes turn bright blue and he goes full fucking angel kind of because his wings are real crappy looking because he's got the shadow and they are like there's like only like the the, the little feathers are real sad 
it's well, well, really well done. I'm just I'm not gonna lie. I, I know, like, it's oh. just so they're just so pathetic. The world's like but the most pathetic is wings. I love them. It's like and the no, Charlie no. Brown Christmas tree of the it is wings. of wings. It is exactly, and the sailors kind of stop because they're like the fuck, and even. Abaddon and Dean hear this noise and see this bright light flash from the diner and Abaddon's like uh, an angel and Dean's like yeah what'd you think we were gonna come in firepower blah blah you know yeah, I, knew, I knew there was an angel here yeah that's fine I was sure, like, totally, totally planning on this yeah totally, totally get the plan. plan yeah and so she throws Dean into a window and disappears which so, is yeah, so this like why is she suddenly why is this the line yeah, but also in Poison Town. So in the tale of Poison Town, so the There's people had to leave so fast. They had to leave like the clothes on the mannequins. And <laughs> that didn't happen. That's not accurate. I'm just kidding. It makes no sense. Oh, so yeah, it, it's nonsense. And so Dean goes into the diner. And wants to know what the fuck Ezekiel did. And Ezekiel is like, they were going to kill Sam, so I protected him. You told me to protect him. I don't know. He's been unconscious this whole time. He's not going to remember this. By the way, here's this knife that I just used to cut the throat of the already dead sailors so that we could convince Sam that you killed them instead of Sam. Or whatever, Angel Blast. And so Dean's like, okay, I, I, I whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm upset about this, but whatever. Um, they have a whole thing about not closing the gates of hell. But Dean's not really with this, this whole plan at all. But he's going to trust Zeke, because he has to trust that Zeke's one of the good guys. And Zeke says, tries to assure Dean that, of course, I'm one of the good guys and that Dean's doing the right thing. So, obviously, only, you know, bad guys would say that they're good guys. Right. And so Zeke is professing, like, I'm one of the good guys. Bad guys would say that. But I think there's also bad guys would say that over Twitter. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find a way to transition into the torture I'm putting you through. But <clears throat> I mean, it's not torture. It's fun. It's bad libs. Sort of. So, during this episode, Padalecki and a few others were live tweeting. And as nothing ever goes away on the internet, we do have access to the tweets that were coming out during this episode. Um, as the, There are many episodes I live tweeting for, but we're just going to do it for this one. So I am taking tweets from um, the some of the actors and the network of during this episode, and I'm pulling out some words from them, and we're going to do this a Madly game. So I'm going to be asking you for to help me fill in the blanks. Right? You ready? Sure. Mad Mad World. I'm going to call this. All right. So this first tweet that came out was from the CW. And for this one, I need a noun. Pencil. Okay. So this tweet, the CW set out. Now they they tweeted, Dean has some pencil in the trunk. And by pencil, we mean Crowley, obviously. All new hashtag Supernatural tonight at 8, blah, blah, blah. So they actually tweeted, the CW, Dean has some junk in the trunk. And by junk, we mean Crowley, obviously. But I appreciate pencil. I appreciate that too. Yeah. Okay, so this next one, as I have started pulling these from the Supernatural Wiki, but the Supernatural Wiki goes to a split. You have to go back through the Internet Archive. But it, long story short, not all the tweets were available from that, and I had to go back into the Twitter world. It's, it was I had a set of day. And so some of these tweets from Jar Pad 
um, which is Jared Padalecki from the archive where I was pulling it from was translating it as Jared Badalecki. And I kind of like Jared Badalecki more. So I need to know what Jared Badalecki was tweeting. And for that, I need a verb, a noun, and a noun. So a verb, verb a noun, and a noun. Yes. So a verb. Dancing. Or dance. Dance, we'll go. Dancing. So noun, one. Guitar. And noun, two. Cadillac. Okay. So, Jared Badalecki tweeted, live dance, here we go. That actually is guitar under the Cadillac. Do you want to guess what he was tweeting? No. <laughs> and so Tell he me. tweeted, live tweet, here we go. That actually is that actually is Mark under the hood. I think he meant trunk, but you know, yeah. like give him some you know. lid, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> give him some That's give fine. him some some lib room. I... Uh. All right, so our next tweet comes from Badonka Donkey, aka Osir Chow, <laughs> aka Kevin Tran. So for his tweet, we need an adjective. Bloody. So his tweet said, every scene with at Mark Shepard bloody is a good one. Well, and frankly, yeah. his, his one that was, that, you know, what he said was every scene with Mark Shepard tied up is a good one. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't too far off on that one. <sighs> Let's see what else Kevin Trown had had to say. So for this one, I need a noun. A noun. um, Oh, gosh. I don't know why I'm blanking. Let's go with dog. I need a place. Eugene. And an adjective. A descriptive word. A descriptive word. Beautiful. All right. So Kevin Tran said, you know, Oscar Chow said, one day I will take a dog before going to Eugene. Then Kevin can be beautiful for once. His actual tweet was, one day I will take a shower before going to work. Then Kevin can be clean for once. (sighs) All right. So these next of the ones, we're just going straight up Jared Badalecki. Okay. So all the rest of these will be coming from him. And so we're going to need an adjective. Um... A descriptive word. I know. I'm just trying yeah. to think of a good one. Ah, I don't know. Let's go with fancy. Okay. And I need a noun. Let's go with um, painting. Like a painting. Mm-hmm. And then I need another adjective. Painful? Is that, that's an adjective, right? Sure. That describes how something is. I need another one. Another adjective? Mm-hmm. Um, let's go with warm. Okay. And I need another noun, a thing, a plural thing. Swimming too. pool. So swimming what? pools. I need a plural. So swimming pools. Uh, all right. So what Jared said was, it was so fancy in the painting under the camera frame. My shirt was painful and warm, and so were my swimming pools. What okay. he actually tweeted was. It was so hot in the bus. Under the camera frame, my shirt was untucked and unbuttoned. And so were my pants. 
Yep, ah. yep, that is lead of Supernatural Tweeting, Jared Padalecki. Okay, so once again, another Jared Padalecki tweet. I need a verb, an action. Running. I need a measure of time. Minute, hour. Millisecond. That's a thing, right? Yes. That is a, that is a measure of time. An adjective? Slowly. And a noun? Um, possum. So Jared tweeted, once he was live tweeting, I ran during the running and shooting shots. For a millisecond, you feel so slowly, you feel so slow that you almost forgot that you're wearing a possum. <laughs> I, I do like imagining Jared Padalecki wearing a possum. Wearing a possum. So his, a possum. It, in fighting one. So in his actual tweet was, I love doing the running and shooting shots. For a second, you feel so tough that you almost forget you're wearing makeup. Ooh, damn, boy. You actually, oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Okay. So we got two more, two more painful things for Diana. We're almost done. We're almost done, but I think it's fun. All right. So again, we're going Jared. And so we need two nouns. Hammer. Okay. And, and Dolly. So Jared tweeted, and that was my first hammer as a Dolly. And what he actually <laughs> tweeted was, and that was my first scene as an angel. Ooh. All right. And our last thing that Jared Padalecki tweeted, and this was not during his live tweet. It was the next day. So I need one adjective and one noun. Adjective. Let's to describe with... the noun. Just, you know, those two are going to go together. Okay. So like gnarly van, something like that. Well, let's go with gnarly van. There we go. Damn it. I didn't mean to influence you that much. That was a good one. All right. So what he tweeted was, thanks for watching last night. Hope y'all liked my gnarly van. Cue Mr. Mr. Night hashtag 80s music rocks. <sighs> and what Mr. Badalecki actually tweeted was, Thanks for watching last night. Hope y'all liked my broken wings. Cue Mr. Mr. 80s music hashtag 80s music rocks. You fucking nerd, Mr. Paddle. Dork. You were fucking dork. dork. And that is uh, I, dork. whoever tweeted that for you. Who, either way, dork. So that was our end of our mad, mad lib world. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed oh. your torture tonight, Diana. I wish I was better at it. I feel like I'm not better. I'm just like slow and not. Clever. It's just not a thing that we do often, right? Like how many times in your past, like years has someone said, Hey, give me a name, name a noun. And you're like, what the fuck is a noun? I'm like person, place, thing, person, place, thing, person, place, thing. Well, and then I was like, oh, and to be fair, like I was trying to run these things like through chat GBT and other stuff. And they'd be like, that's a gerund. And I'm like, the, no, that's not what I need. Like, I need to know, like, it was like, tell me like I'm the stupid. Basics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <sighs> Anyways, so. we all love that though. All right. So we are going back to Sam Zekiel, but in the Zeke form. Which, damn it, Gene Winchester, I went with Zeke first, but I also appreciate that none of us wants to take out the time to, to write out or say Ezekiel. Yeah. Well, and basically this is the, they've just finished off kind of their whole conversation about Zeke kind of trying to convince both, trying to convince Sam or Dean and Dean trying to convince himself that Zeke's one of the good guys. Um, and Ezekiel tries to reassure Sam that he's doing the right thing. Do you Zeke? Zeke, oh my god. Zeke tries to reassure Dean that he is doing the right thing. Yes. And then Sam 
actually wakes up like from back in his position on the floor where he was unconscious. And Dean pretends that he's the one that killed these three demons alone because he caught them by surprise or some shit. Cause and it was, he's like, Oh, well, it's very that's messy. Why I'm very slit lucky. Their throats. So, so, that's so, much so like, that Dean could tell this lie. Yeah. yeah. Or so much like Vera Allen, they could cover up their, their, their knocks, which were just not looking that great. <laughs> that's not what it's, it is. So, anyways, oh. it's all just fucking weird and lies, yeah. and it's gross, and I don't like it. Well, Tracy pulls up in baby then. And also, I don't like that. No, and then she just like basically hops in the back seat, and then they all tear out of town. And then they go to the bunker, and Tracy is gone. Yeah, she's gone, and I don't think we ever see her again. As, no. I, I, she was her credits this was the only she had one episode it's very weird very weird. maybe this is like the less problematic version of comeback tracy that screeching weasel should have done all right so for that inside joke we'll move on to dean so, with a bucket of chicken and some prune juice yeah and they're looking for kevin but he ain't there but I, you're just like letting that slide that he was a bucket of chicken and some prune oh, juice no, I noticed. okay <laughs> trying to help out kevin to help kevin's stomach out <laughs> And Crowley is still in the dungeon. So that means that Kevin did not cave to Crowley's manipulations. So that's or, good-ish. you know, I mean, maybe. We don't know. Like, he's well, worked over, not. though. Yeah, but he is we real worked gone. over. He looks real bad. We can't and Crowley him. is like, hey, I'm going to give you guys two demon names right now. They're underperformers. If you do me a favor. And he gives them two names. And, um, but it's not for free. Quinn and no. Quinn yes. Quinn. And basically he wants in exchange, uh, for the enjoyment that Kevin gave him. And he was very amused that he was like a toy that he could wind him up. Um, that's what he's giving them. This is the, this, because, they, they, because Kevin beat the shit out of Crowley, Crowley's giving Sam and Dean two names. That's basically what he's saying. Well, yeah. Or just, it was, but it was because, Ke- because Crowley was fucking with him and all yeah. he wanted to do was fuck with Kevin's head. And he was like, this is like, you were paying you off for this. I really like, I got off on that, which is gross. And so they leave him alone again to try and find Kevin. Yeah. And Kevin's still in the bunker. And he's but not for long. He's got his backpack and he is trying to leave. And he is he's done. He's mad. No, he, he wants out. to find his mom, which I well, think is like a legit fucking thing. And I don't understand why the Winchesters are not on board to help Kevin solve the mystery of whether or not Linda Tran is dead or not. Like that seems I just don't like, think that's a question. I feel like she's dead. I, but they don't know. They never saw a body. They don't like, That's true. they, they just, all they know is that Crowley said that he killed her. And like, if I was Sam or Dean and that was Mary and all I had was Crowley That's telling reasonable. me that You're Mary right. was dead, right. I would be going after him. And you just have like the shit that like where Dean is trying to come, look, what Dean's about to do. Right. So why are they not on board with helping Kevin? Trying to find out that's if true. Mom, like I feel like they should be with him right now doing this. No, that's a good that's a that's a good point. I I didn't go yeah. that hard on that. So, but Dean is telling telling Kevin that Crowley's messing with your head. Crowley's lying about your mom being alive, and I know that you want to bolt, but um, you know we you know you're we're family. You know, you're looking all... for the profit, and and Kevin's like, what am I useful? And Dean calls him family. Like after all the crap we've been through, we would die for you. You, me, Sam, and Castiel are all the family we've got. And Kevin's crying. But you're also telling him to abandon his other family, which I feel is something a cult leader would do. And Kevin, you who joined a cult of the Winchesters, I am sorry. That is, that is, is you're just like, but now there's only four people in your cult, right? But I feel like you've been isolated. You have been taken away from everything that you've loved. And now they're telling you you're a prophet of the Lord. Yet you joined a fucking cult. Sorry, Kevin Tran. You're right. All the markings are there. We missed it. Yeah, coming um, to Netflix soon, The Cult of the Winchesters. Right. The Twin Flames of Kevin Tran. <laughs> so, so apparently all of this works because he's just like, fine, I'm just going to go to sleep, which I appreciate. I often take that strategy. 
So Sam and Dean sit down, they're talking. Dean, Sam's researching. And, and Dean's, Dean's just like, let's whiskey. have some whiskey. <laughs> yeah. And um, Sam's, you know, revisiting so what Tracy said. Do you think this is Men of Letters whiskey? Or is it, like, is it whiskey they brought in? Or are they just, like, hitting the Men of Letters stash? Because I bet the Men of Letters had a really good stash way, of probably, It was probably way better than any shit Dean would buy. Dean would probably, you know, we all know he buys rock gut. So, yeah. Anyways, all right. So Dean's pouring whiskey from because either way he's put it in decanter. Whatever is happening, he has moved into decanting whiskey life, which is pretty. It's a big step. I think it's a big grown up step. Well, Sam is talking about. He's very upset about what Tracy had said, and because she, he's like, it's not wrong. And Dean's like, look, I get it, but you have to keep in mind that you also have helped more people than you've hurt. And we need to look forward, not back. And so they toast to the now. And uh, anyway, so they're, they've kind of like, Sam actually is sharing about how he's the first time he's happy. And his, you know, I look around and sees himself surrounded by friends and family. And he's happy with life for the first time in forever. And Dean's just like, ah, fuck. And slams his whiskey. Yep, yep. He agrees with him that things never went better and he downs this whiskey because he's full of lies and probably cirrhosis. But yeah, and so all right, let's let's shut up some cast members, then we can wrap up some final thoughts on this. Casting couch is the casting couch. Were they on that show that time with that guy? All right, so we've got first off, we'll touch on our demonic grandmother, our agreement, grandma demon. I um, did, I left out a, a tweet from one of the former supernatural executors, like executor, executive producers that was just like, Oh, Grammy, I already miss you. It's funny. Well. That was Paula Shaw. She her acting career goes back to the seventies. She's in episodes of Shaft, Starsky and Hutch, Little House on the Prairie, General Hospital, Twenty One Jump Street, Young and the Restless, over ten times, X Files, I Zombie, Van Helsing. She was also Jason's mom in Freddy vs Jason, and has done a lot of the um, Hallmark uh, Christmas movies. Um, one of our sailors uh, that they call Crew Cut in the um, in the credits is jesse hutch who actually does a lot of stunts he did stunts in true calling smallville um and in supernatural and also appeared in episodes of those shows as well as v and hellcats and once upon a time uh he was also trey in freddy versus drace versus freddy versus jason spencer in butterfly effect officer daly in arrow which is a reoccurring character angel uh, agent russell tavaroff in uh in another character in batwoman appearing over 10 times and he's also done a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. Irv, Irv. Franklin was played by Paul Ray. Um, episodes of Teenage, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, CSI, Star Trek Which Enterprise. Which Sabrina? The original? Teenage Witch, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, With okay. Clarissa. Yeah. <laughs> With Clarissa, you like that? Anyways, uh, <laughs> Star Trek Enterprise, Desperate Housewives, NCIS, Malcolm the Middle, House, Fringe, Memphis Beat, Justified, Mad Men, True Blood, and more. He was Emmett Quincy in the movie True Grit and um, was the chicken impresario in the ballad of Buster Scruggs. What a great mm-hmm. name. It's after all. Oh, yeah. So um, Tracy Bell um, is our other hunter. It was played by Olivia Ryan Stern. Uh, been in episodes of Hellcats, a few episodes of Continuum, a few episodes of Van Helsing, and was a reoccurring character named Tina Patel on Riverdale. Our sergeant, <coughs> Miranda Bates, <laughs> was played by Carmen Moore. Um, she's been in episodes of Stargate SG-1, 4400, Smallville, Hellcats, iZombie, Bates Motel, Arrow, um, was a reoccurring character on the TV show Nancy Drew named uh, Hannah and was um, on The Flash as uh, Kristen um, in over 20 times. Well, yeah. Quite a cast. They brought in. There was yeah. a, there was a lot of people in this episode. So, uh, so what did you think? 
It was good. I thought it was. I just felt like this. This like these random ass hunters that like we didn't know where they came from, like Pete and Tracy, and then they're gone was very confusing. Um, they do. I think like, the show does a very bad job of the hunter network, especially at this point, right? Like I feel like, like I don't they, need a map. They, I don't need to know everybody's name in advance. I just need to understand that like. Don't I think it would just like be I so much cooler if you'd had like kind of you know th- that network be more of a thing, right? Yeah. So like maybe at some point you ran into Herb or Tracy, like so you actually gave a damn about what the fuck is happening to these people because if you just insert a random character into an episode, I, I like you expect us to automatically have sympathy for them because they're yeah. a hunter and they're on the side of good. Well, like, we don't even know, like, why would we care that Pete's getting hung for the location of the yeah. Winchesters? What if Pete's a bad guy? I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's just kind of odd. We've had hunters in bad the hunters. past that were not the greatest, right? Yeah. So, so I thought that was weird. Before I start giving a shit about these people, I want to know why. And so I felt like... Yeah, look, give me something. Yeah. I thought that was weird. Uh, I, you know, we pointed out a lot of, like, the funny inconsistencies in the story the military the, in, 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 things that just real weird uh, <laughs> but but i also once again i understand some of it so that was that was just kind of funny and a little incongruous if you will but um and i'm yeah, sure yeah, some a, they have to be very well aware of because like the internet is loud i feel like they really just needed an episode that bordered on like it's not a monster of the week because it's definitely carrying on the Abaddon thing, but I felt like they needed like just an action episode, but that still was driving the storyline. And I think that's what they did. I don't know if I loved it, but I think that's what they did successfully. Well, and we also had them setting up for the season, right? There were so oh, many yeah. references what to is the story that's like when the story they're Abaddon, like, Oh, we're gonna have Crowley. and then like and we're gonna have all these things and it's gonna be a hell of a year and just like okay. Yeah. So we're gonna have what, what was your thing from earlier, like the Angel Z's and Demon Z's and <laughs> Angely, Demony, Monstery and Ghosty. Yeah. So I feel like that was a very good setup for yeah. The season, right? I know, so we're still in episode two, but and I'm, you know, I'm glad that Abaddon is the you know stretching out her her boss. She's having her she boss moment, and you know, trying to do her her takedown. So at least that's happening. Yeah. Any you know, but so not a bummer episode. You no. know, it was just a, it was just a. It was an important setup. I get that, but it was fine. <sighs> Exposition, I guess. Season season nine. Woo! In season nine, Kevin Tran. What the fuck? Like, why are you like? And then like they're just uh, we're just gonna ignore us, Kevin Tran's mom thing. Like, just like being ignored, Crowley in a trunk. I feel like is this the, are the Winchesters just procrastinating? Is that just a, the we're just adopting into which I'm not opposed to. Maybe I'm procrastinating a bunch of shit right now. So I think we're all maybe just they like need more, they just need more cult members to do things for them. No, I think we finally figured out their cult though. We got it. Let's go and try it again. And sometimes your cult members just get killed. It happens. So, on that note, cheers, jerk. Devil's Trap Podcast is a Don't Get It production. Meow. Devil's Trap Podcast is part of the Ship It Studios Podcast Network. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter at Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us at Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share with all your friends. We're at all your favorite podcast outlets and at devilstrappodcast.com. I'm Babe. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Devil's Trap Podcast.